Hello, hello, hello. Hi, fuelers. Come on in. Come on in. I'm Corey Joe. I'm the executive director of Fuel Milwaukee, and I am so glad to have you all here for today's webinar, Curbside, which is a chat with some of Milwaukee's favorite restaurants and eateries. We're going to be talking to them today about their um, pivot and um, the, what their experience has been operating um, in quarantine. Hi, everybody. I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of who's on the call with us today. I see Truman just hopped on. Hey, Truman. Hey. <laughs> we got Truman McGee from uh, Funky Fresh Spring Rolls. Nice background. Making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got Becca from Birch and Butcher. Hey, Becca. Okay, Marcia. Hi, Marcia. Marcia from Lush Popcorn. How are you? I'm good. Good. Good to see your face. Caitlin from Tandem. Hi, guys. Caitlin. We got Julio from Snifters. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey. Last but not least, we got Lori from All Milwaukee. Hey, Lori. Oh, hey. <laughs> How are you? Good day. Good to see you all. How are you all doing? Wonderful. Good, good. Okay, so uh, I know, hey, Renell, we got people going in the chat. So let me <laughs> remind folks that there's a chat room here that's open in the chat. Um, if you want to have a conversation with other listeners who are um, also on the webinar, go in the chat and you guys can talk about anything that we're talking about and the guests can kind of hop in there too um, if they're able to do that from um, the devices they're using. And then if you have any questions right away, put them in the Q&A. Like you might have questions right off the bat, put them in the Q&A because towards the end of the call, we're going to go in there and pull your questions out. Okay, so you can put those questions anytime and we'll go in there and uh, moderate them. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is kick off this conversation with um, Lori because I got this idea to do this webinar when I first initially when uh, we knew we were going to be working from home and the, you know, safer at home order. It was just kind of really hectic and we were looking at different um, options of how we were going to bring information to fuel members and I wasn't sure exactly what to do. But I remember seeing a couple of Facebook and Instagram posts where people were sharing stories that Lori was doing on um, the restaurant scene. So Lori, you can tell us a little bit about what you do for on Milwaukee anyway every day i mean very uh focused on food and dining and keeping us connected but i thought it was so special um to see I, it lifted my spirits to see that you were still connecting with the restaurants and kind of letting folks know what was available to them um with curbside so tell us a little bit about you know that decision and your philosophy and how you've continued to share information mm -hmm. You know, so being a food and dining writer, I mean, that is what I do every day. Um, I pretty much, I owe my job to all of the restaurants and chefs and, and people in the industry, bars and restaurants alike, um, because they are the ones that supply, you know, the content that I do every day. And when you talk about things being hectic, you know, and everybody kind of like the shift from, oh, we're going from a normal situation to you know, like safer at home and you know businesses being closed um it, it was a little crazy and for a second there i was like okay how do i fit into this picture you know i mean my normal day-to-day -day is going out to restaurants um eating their food having chats with um with chefs you know photographing their food um, telling their stories like how do how do i do this in the new normal um and it seemed to me that with restaurants closing, the absolute first thing that I needed to do was to help them get the word out about the fact that they were still open, that people could still get food from them. Um, and that was as much a service, you know, we have readers that depend on me to tell them, you know, what's going on, you know, where to go, uh, what the newest things are. And so 
I took it upon myself. I'm like, I need to create the most comprehensive as possible guide to, you know, where people can continue to find the great food in Milwaukee that they always have been able to find. So, I mean, and overall, I mean, on Milwaukee just really made the shift where like, we want to help people. We want to educate people about what they can do in these circumstances. Um, we have never really been hard news, but it becomes more and more important right now to keep people smiling, to encourage them and to give them all of the information that they need to, to really, to move on, to sustain, to live, you know, an enjoyable life, even if we have to stay, you know, far apart from one another. So. Yeah, as we get going in the conversation, we'll talk to each of the um, owners we have on the call and find out how this experience has expect, uh, impacted their operations and just emotionally mm -hmm. and financially and everything else. We'll talk a little bit about that. But I'm wondering, I mean, your world is food and dining. As a foodie yourself, how has this affected you? And how are you <laughs> connected? I know, I know I'm struggling, but yes. <laughs> how are you staying well, connected? You know, it's interesting because by nature, I'm a little bit of an introvert, um, but I really, I really do miss people. I didn't realize how, how much I had come to depend, to depend on my daily conversations, you know, with folks in the industry and with, you know, with friends, even, you know, family. Um, so um, we've been trying to do some things at Milwaukee every Thursday at five o'clock. We have a virtual happy hour. Anybody is welcome to join in. Um, we chat about kind of the things that have happened all week. Um, we're typically bringing on a guest or two. Sometimes they'll make a cocktail. You know, sometimes it's somebody from a bar who'll make a cocktail. Um, and that's definitely, you know, keeping me connected. Um, and I'm trying to stay connected in a, in a meaningful way to restaurants simply by like ordering carry out. Um, and and I, you don't get to see very, very many. If they're doing it right, you're doing curbside pickup and you're not really seeing or talking to very many people. Um, but I do feel like, all of these restaurants express themselves through food on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, you know, if, if I could eat more times a day and had more money to carry out every meal, <laughs> I would do that. <laughs> yeah, well, we, I just want to thank you for doing your part and um, keeping people um, connected and uplifted as much as, um, as much thank as you, you can. Thank so, you. It's the least I can do, really. Yeah, and thank you for so. doing this with us. Okay. Now we're gonna cut, Becca, get ready. We're coming <laughs> to you. Can you hear me? How are things going with you uh, in Birch and Butcher? How, what's going on over there? Uh, it's good. We're doing curbside on Tuesdays through Saturdays. Um, once in a while, we're doing a Sunday brunch pop-up, which has been great. Um, it's just very different. I remember the first week we decided that we're going to do something completely different and this is the rules we have to follow and the new game is uh bring food outside for people to eat and take home um and it was just a complete mind shift of how do we do that in our style and be true to our brand and still make people happy and to be honest we're still figuring it out i don't know if we'll ever get it right but yeah yeah every day is a new day right rebecca like, yes. how, ha how has this shift been for you? I mean, have you had to change your menu much? Um, paired it, I know you've pared it down quite a bit, um, but how, how are you making those decisions? It looks like she might have gotten kicked off, so we'll let her, they're having some connection. Come back on. We'll, we'll come back to her when she hops back on for us. Uh, hey, Truman, are you still here? I He's see you. <laughs> He's muted. Hey, Truman. Can you hear us? There we go. <laughs> Can you hear hey. me out? I'm actually, doing? I'm actually driving, so I'm, I'm almost at my destination. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know how I was able to, to sit still for an hour. What I, you know, I thought, it, I thought it would work out, but things happen. Okay. <laughs> I'm part Truman, now. you are always on the move. Always yeah. on the always. move. I was, I was hoping I could get to the destination before you guys got to me, but um, it, it's, it, it, it is what it is it, as in the restaurant business. It's always on the go. Like literally last minute, we ran out of pickles. I need to pick like one <laughs> item that you would think. I, I think I got a pickle in my background and I ran out of pickles. And um, 
I had to run to the store. Somebody in the chat said Truman is hustling like never, never before. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So like, I want to add this to you. you know, I I ask you. Pickles. <laughs> hustling over pickles. Truman, I know you and Marcia both are in the um, Sherman Phoenix. So I just want to ask you, I mean, you really do have a community around you uh, of restaurants, literally. So how has this affected um, your business and that community and how, you know, how has that community helped to uh, lift up all of the food and restaurant services in the Phoenix? Oh, this, uh, the COVID-19 has definitely had uh, a massive impact on the community in a lot of ways, negative and positive. And uh, some of the obvious ne negative ones are, you know, just our people that come to the Sherman Phoenix to meet and greet and, and, you know, be part of that atmosphere, you know, can't come anymore. Like people who, you know, you and your family, you come and a lot of different people would come and just enjoy the atmosphere, get good food or even get to work. And um, not seeing that has been different. I'm definitely an extrovert and I love the energy of people. So not being able to hug people and see people has been um, something quite different. And uh, I'm sure a lot of my fellow tenants at the Phoenix can agree, but um, as far as direct impact to our business, we completely change our business model. We no longer serve hot rolls. We we sell all of our rolls frozen, and um, we we deliver them only. We don't offer the curbside. Just cause I just want to make it more easier for people to to get their food rather than at risk coming out or whatever. So just another layer of protection for us, for them. And I opted out of using like any third party uh, drive services just because I feel like our team is more knowledgeable on the food safety and ha and food handling mm -hmm. aspects than potentially an Uber or Grubhub driver. No knock against them, but I just feel more safer to have our product delivered by mm -hmm. our people. And will that change? Well, Possibly. And that's a cost savings to you as well. I mean, yeah, you're keeping yeah, your people employed doing delivery. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So... And that's another thing I wanted to, you know, the people that's dependent on us got families. I wanted to keep them working. So essentially all of our cashiers turned into delivery drivers and our mm -hmm. cooks and turned into master packagers or whatever. So it's, it's been a journey, but um, it's also opened up a lot of different opportunities for us as well. Yeah. Becca's back. Becca. Lori, do you have a question for Becca? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did. So we, we were talking about kind of the pivot to curbside pickup. Now, how did that impact you guys? You guys have changed your menu a little bit, you know, kind of pared things down. What were the factors that went into deciding, like, what does Birch and Butcher look like as a carry out only restaurant? Um, there's a lot of things that were just constantly moving. So our first menu was hot sandwiches that we were making to order and uh, we didn't have online ordering. So it was all phone calls. And that was a struggle because we just couldn't keep up with the phone calls or making hot food that we were proud of um, every night for those two, three hours that we were selling food. So then the next menu came out with was more of like a take it home and warm it because when I do take out food, I don't like getting cold food at home. So I felt like it was best to give people some food that they can warm in their oven and enjoy it at like the peak of its awesomeness. So that's what yeah. we were doing. Yeah. Well, and that's a huge thing. Like, I mean, I live on the West side and a lot of the places that I go to for carry out are across town. I mean, that's just kind of naturally how it goes. So I've been excited when people have switched over to kind of a, either a heat and eat or a, this is ready for you, but you can warm it up. Um, right. Cause I do think that's a better experience. Um, how have, how have your customers like regular customers responded? Um, you know, we kept a lot of the proteins that were on our regular menu, our, our chicken, and the skirt steak. Um, we did some pulled pork for a while. So we were able to give them a lot of what they loved us for already. Um, and people have just been so kind to um, come in and order once a week and even give us feedback to say like, hey, when I got this home, 
you know, the portion size was this or your directions were confusing or for rewarming. So just being able to get feedback from our guests who really care about us to say like, I know this is a hard time for you guys and we're just gonna try to help you get through it. It's been so awesome. So, so, there's, so there's good and bad to be, to be acknowledged here in every respect. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we never claim to be super good at curbside food. So to get that feedback to say like, this could be better. Yeah, you're totally right. And um, just being able to roll with the punches and do those things has been awesome. No, I remember I'm, I'm a, I'm a birch and butcher girl and I'm all about the skirt steak, which is probably hard to um, do curbside, but I'm nostalgic. So can you show us the fire show us oh, the yeah. <laughs> hold on one sec it's one of the I mean, things that makes it uh, a really cool um experience I, I hope i don't lose you with the internet connection in the kitchen but okay uh, maybe sorry elijah's just getting stuff ready i don't know if you can see it okay wow but. still lighting it up <laughs> we're cooking as normal um still getting to use the fire and getting all that flavor in our food like we normally do, um, which is great. It makes people happy. Right. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Becca. Yeah. Hey, Marcia. Hey. Somebody in the chat just said, how do you too? Hey, Marcia, lunch popcorn. <laughs> so Marcy, tell us, are people still craving popcorn during the pandemic? I hope so. I call those quarantine snacks. <laughs> <laughs> so we are definitely still snacking and packing over here. So corn during the quarantine. <laughs> quarantine. Yep. How are you doing? I just wanna yeah, let's just check in with you. What what's been mm -hmm. the impact to you so far? Yeah, so it's been real different in um with the Sherman Phoenix being closed, so like the entire lobby. So I'll show you guys real quick because I'm sitting in the lobby. It's kind of an eerie feeling being here, like no chairs, there's no one here, but every now and then you'll see the business owners pop in and, you know, one of the greatest things has been around collaboration. And so bouncing ideas off of other people in the industry or, or how we can do better. And so a big thing that we've done is we started pushing our online sales a lot more. That's the one good thing about popcorn is we can seal it up really and so it'll stay fresh during shipping, but then also looking at ways of how can we collaborate with other local vendors in the, in the city. So the last couple of weeks, we've been doing these Sherman Phoenix combos, which is, you know, pizza, popcorn, wings. Um, we uh, collaborated with another company last week for um, like a 420 package with Purple Rain. So I think the more that we can cross pollinate, cross collaborate, the better. So that's really been our focus, mm -hmm. and what we've been doing lately. So, yep, there it is, the, the Sherman Phoenix quarantine combos. There so, you go. And how, how can people, how can people get your product right now? So right now you can order online at lushpopcorn.com. Uh, we have free curbside, so you can just pull up and call us. Uh, at, the, at the Sherman Phoenix? At the Sherman Phoenix. Um, we also are doing the Winter Farmer's Market offers a Saturday pickup. So if people email us at info at Lush Popcorn or call us 414-215-0052, they can do a Saturday pickup as well. So it, we're getting as creative as we can, online, curbside, market mm -hmm. clubs, and yeah. then the Saturday specials. Well, the online sort of takes you back to the beginning, right? Yes. I mean, because you started, this is like yeah. a flashback. It <laughs> is. It's Lush, it definitely is. Yeah, because Lush Popcorn started online. I remember buying popcorn like way back, <laughs> well, yeah. probably just a few years ago, but yeah. So, so it probably feels like, whoa, we've, you know, we've gone to the past, but you, you really have gotten involved. You, you, you've used this time to get involved in the community. Um, you talked about the farmer's market and people being able to get your product there, but you've also been doing some drops for healthcare workers. Talk mm -hmm. to me about that. Like, like what, how you've been spending your time and, and what that means to you. Yeah, absolutely. So we, um, 
we're reaching out to different organizations to figure out how we can give back as well. So I feel like, and, and Truman actually said it best, like people remember what you do during these times, right? So it's very personal mm -hmm. for us. My mother is a, a registered nurse, so she's a frontline worker. And so I send her popcorn. And so the opportunity to, to partner with the 40 under 40 group here and do a similar drop with way more impact was a great opportunity. We've also talked with Caitlin about, you know, partnering with the tandem and seeing if we can get some popcorn over there. Before she's a 40 under 40, took the batch we had for her the first time. I figured. It's, uh -huh. again, it's all about how do we collaborate and, um, you know, work to cross promote has really been my focus. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. laughing because uh, Rennell is in the in the chat saying he wants some samples. <laughs> <laughs> we might bring back the Netflix and chill combo with the lemonade. Oh, yeah. yeah. Use your those. imagination. Imagination, yeah. right. So if you right. guys have ideas, shoot them out. I'll take them. Yes. Put, put some condoms in there. We're going to have a lot of quarantine babies. <laughs> a lot of quarantine kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, so Caitlin, let's let's go to you. Um, now, listen. I w as I was kind of pulling up websites and articles about everybody. There's there's a lot of different articles and um, news uh, outlets really covering your pivots and what you're doing. And uh, I was reminded of the outpouring of community support you had um, when you hurt your leg, right? Did you hurt? Yeah, it was your yeah. leg. And so I'm like, wow, this has been. Um, a bumpy ride, but you've definitely had an outpouring of su support. Um, you're really a staple in the community and tandem too. Um, I'm just wondering, and you have the best French fries in Milwaukee. No offense. Yeah. To you. <laughs> 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 so good. But uh, tell us how has the isolation affected your uh, isolation affected your business, and uh, what's been the community's response to um, tandem. Yeah, we just run in a soup kitchen now. So we literally like had to make a decision whether or not we were going to try and do curbside and delivery and do free meals for folks in the community at the same time. And the staff, we just got together and decided that when this was all over, we wanted to do the thing we were going to be most proud of. So we've been serving a couple hundred meals out of this place Monday through Friday for a month and a half. It's been weird. Wow. The restaurant is very different. Like it's just a bunch of boxes and to go containers and hand sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> you have all the same, all the hand sanitizer. <laughs> we have all the hand sanitizer. No, we don't. We actually have to like call in something um, because we're also like passing meals out to people every day. And our community is kind of the epicenter. I mean, that's shifting in Milwaukee, but the epicenter are like where people are really getting sick um and getting hurt so we had to call in a couple of favors to get some more hand sanitizer so so caitlin talk about i mean your big news in the last week has been this partnership with um world central kitchen yeah how has uh, how has that how has that changed things and what do you know about that and kind of how that's working so far um it's changed things huge i mean like we knew we were going to try and do this through the end of june and that's what we had a budget for in donations and so partnering with the world central kitchen gives us the option to do this even longer because like i've said it a couple times but it's not like people who work in restaurants folks who work at the movie theater the mall those are the people we're seeing in line every day those jobs just aren't going to magically come back june 1st right like not everyone's going to get hired right away um and so mm -hmm it makes it possible for us to do this quite a bit longer. And it's really cool because it makes it so that the restaurant partners we've been using to help us fulfill the need for a couple hundred meals a day, I can pay them something that's actually worth something now. So like I can hand them, literally I walked off on this call in the beginning, it was because I was handing a stack to somebody for a hundred meals. That's a pretty good profit margin for folks to be able to kind of keep their businesses going while we keep going. Yeah, yeah. And and how how different does how different does creating community meals feel from being the tandem in general? How do, is it? I don't know. In some ways, I feel like it's kind of the same. It's exactly There's, the same with like the monetary transactions. 
yeah, we're always trying to serve community. We're always operating on razor thin margins. We always like when people are like, oh, what are you going to do? You might go out of business. I was like, we've been going out of business for three and a half years. This is not new. Like we're used to trying to scrap <laughs> to figure it out. Um, but it's a lot less stressful now in some ways. Like we make 100, 150 meals at a time. And so mm -hmm. it's given my staff the opportunity to get a little more creative decide what they want to do you know find their culinary voice um it's it's been pretty cool yeah. Kaylin, there's a yeah. question somebody in the in the chat just asked are there ways that folks can support you right now like donations for the meals or virtual gift cards anything like that yeah so we take donations we got a button that someone put on our website um so you can always donate on the website some folks just stop by and give us like a couple bucks people have sent checks in the mail but yeah there's always a way to keep this going i think we're going to be serving meals for a long time i don't think everybody in milwaukee is just going to go back to normal you know you think about all mm -hmm. the bodies that are usually in the phoenix who are working or people who have jobs who then go in there and spend money a lot of those people are going to be screwed for a long time all of my staff i laid off on march 16th and said like, run to the employment office, get ahead of everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. And I, of everybody, I still, not a single one has gotten paid out yet. And they applied on like the 17th, wow. right? So this is gonna be mm -hmm. a long wave of people really needing, needing food. Mm -hmm. Thanks for all you're doing, Caitlin. No Thank problem. you so much. It's fun. Julio, hey. Yes, yes. How you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing. Yeah, so okay, so you're, you um, <laughs> just reopened on, was it Saturday? Correct, this last Saturday. Okay, what are, what, what are you, um, what did you decide to do and how, are, how has been the response? So, I mean, I know it's pretty, pretty soon in your process, but tell us how you arrived at your decision and what you, what you decided. <laughs> sure, I think the biggest issue we've had uh, from postponing our reopening has been staff. Um, obviously, we all have our kids at home now, so it's been tough to find sitters and with the distancing order and so forth. So staffing has been the biggest issue. Um, this Saturday, um, you know, I uh, got a good friend of mine who has experience in bartending and serving experience to help me out. And I actually ended up cooking uh, eight to 10 hours on Saturday myself. So uh, got a good response for our first day. We opened up around noon and closed around, I want to say 9, 9.30. Uh, so we're pretty uh, happy with uh, the outcome. Being our first day, one and two, we're in Walker's Point on South 5th Street. It's like a ghost town. Everyone is closed. Yeah. We're the only ones that are open. Um, so we'll see. I mean, the biggest test will be this week um, with um, having a full week of uh, opening. So our hours will be mm -hmm. uh, noon till 8, uh, Wednesday through Saturday for now. We're just going to test things out. And again, just like everyone has stated, uh, you just have to be fluid and implement changes as you go. Yeah, yeah. So so are people calling in orders or do you have online ordering? How is that working? Co correct. We uh, used to do DoorDash. We didn't do too much mm -hmm. prior to this big uh, pandemic, but we uh, re-implemented DoorDash one and then just curbside. So we've been keeping okay. people in their cars. Just we have some signage outside, uh, sandwich board, that just states, uh, just give us a call if you're here to pick up, whether it's DoorDash or, or a uh, customer of ours, and we'll go out there and deliver. So it's, and been, so, it's, been, it's been a little tough, just like uh, um, I believe Becca had stated. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've never done curbside. So to test things out with the flavors and the textures of our foods, more specifically the empanadas um, with carryout, has been uh, a little, uh, um, how would I say, um, nerve-wracking just to see mm -hmm. if they're gonna taste well by the time they get home. And so far I followed up with quite a few people and they've loved the food, the taste. So uh, we're, we're gonna see how it goes. That's great. So for people who've ordered from you before, how much the same, and people like me, like, like what are you serving? Is it somewhat of your full menu? Are there some, some different things people can try? Um, and for people who've never tried your food, what, what kinds of things can they expect? Well, before our traditional menu was tapas, we had small plates. Our biggest seller uh, were our empanadas. We have a mac and cheese mm -hmm. empanada with a Peruvian ahi sauce. We have a buffalo chicken with a blue cheese sauce. We have our new empanada, which we were going to launch 
with the reopening of our of our of our restaurant, our new menu is our steak and cheese with a green uh, a, he, uh, a green um, um, jalapeno sauce. Um, so I think we were known more or less for our, for our empanadas. We implemented mm -hmm. and uh, incorporated some new, more comfort, easier foods like wings. So we have three, four different types of wings. Also, we added what we call our crazy papas, which are loaded fries with different proteins, whether it's steak, uh, carnitas, which is uh, pulled pork, um, or mac and cheese. And those actually did pretty well on Saturday. And then lastly, we incorporated some of our uh, traditional Latin cuisine, uh, chicken, steak, uh, quesadillas, or our tortas, which is like a Mexican kind of sandwich. Um, and that actually did pretty well on Saturday as well. And those are new additions that we're going to be adding to our menu. Awesome. To kind of keep, yeah, I, to kind of keep that fusion going. Yeah. It's making me hungry, Julio. <laughs> <laughs> making me hungry. Well, you, also, you also did something else to kind of pivot. And I don't, maybe this was part of the plan before, but food trucks. You have two food trucks now? Oh, uh, well, one, uh, one? is, one is kind of in, uh, in transition and, uh, um, it's out there already, but we're just finalizing the, the partnership aspect of it. Um, and then the second one, yes, is going to be ours. We're actually just had our, um, as you mentioned earlier, we just had our food inspection reinspection, uh, last Thursday, hence we opened on Saturday and we actually got our food truck inspected as well. A couple of small little things that need to get done. We're going to, that, our first food truck is going to be out and about uh, hopefully by the end of this week. Awesome. And that'll be, awesome. we're just going to keep everything as is just to save time, of course, mm -hmm. and start making some money. So we're going to keep mm -hmm. the name uh, more of the traditional Mexican menu. Um, we're probably most likely going to have it on uh, 12th, 13th and national for now and just be fluid again, just move around throughout the city and see how it goes and test the yeah. waters. Yeah. Smart, smart, because you can't just stand still, right? You got to <laughs> right. change, got to do something, yep. right? Got to be fluid in this industry. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a question, I'm in, I'm in the Q&A right now. This is a question that it, probably any of you, it would be relevant for any of you. So the question reads, how do you see food service equipment helping your efforts to continue delivery or takeout quality? And is there anything you wish you had to augment, <laughs> augment your service right now? Any, anything on the wish list, anything that, or, or is it just working with what you have? Um, I think for us, uh, working with what we have, we, I'm sure my chefs would say something else, but um, <laughs> like there's no money to spend on equipment. So mm -mm. the general party line is what we have is what we have and make do and be creative and make it work. So I guess I haven't let myself dream about that financially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, from what I've seen, it's been a lot of the same. Make do with what you have and simplify your menu and, and trying to, mm -mm. you know, optimize on, on what you have today. Mm -mm. We got a good think, question. Yeah, go ahead. Take, oh, take I just think because we're doing like mm -mm. a charitable thing, we've been able to ask for equipment. And so or like companies like Fine Brothers on King Drive, I literally just texted somebody and was like, I need a cooler. And they literally dropped one off and we were able to start putting meals in there. So um, I think in a time like this, especially when you have like good connections with local organizations that ask is worth it. Like, can I use this for a while? They're not selling coolers. They're not outfitting kitchens right now, mm -hmm. you know, asking for the help. There's a question about any of the, um, personal protective gear. So in the kitchen, are you all, do you have policies around um, masks, um, making sure folks aren't sick when they come in? Um, just kind of how, how have you all been operating? I see you, I see you, Caitlin. <laughs> how about the others? Yeah, for okay. us, uh, for us, it's again, basic rules and just implementing the face mask, uh, the gloves and just wiping counters and everything off every, after you use them and or if a client comes in for some reason because we've had walk-ins just randoms uh, we do not keep our door locked just in case for um, emergency um, reasons so yeah um, there's a question this is kind of directed toward um, 
Caitlin and Marcia, anybody else who wants to answer, but the question is, how are you guys planning your inventory um, given the unknown, unknown level of demand and supply? Like, how are you, have, how has it been different versus now versus in person? Um, just how have you been dealing with that? So, so for us in the beginning, it was a, even more difficult because we got a number of our supplies from Amazon. Um, like we use organic cheese and our cheese popcorn and um, with Amazon kind of slowing down and halting some of the supplies we've gotten like, hey, this won't be delivered till May. And then we'll go in and order something as a backup that maybe we'll get it sooner. And then the, the delivery times have changed drastically. So it's been kind of day by day, just trying to go back to much, much smaller um, quantities and batches and making sure that everything can stay fresh. And then we also try to work with as many local places as possible to get things like butter and our corn to make sure that uh, we can keep some of the pipelines open. Um, I got a question in the chat. What are your thoughts on services like DoorDash or Grubhub? Um, some people are reading mixed reviews about them. Um, mm -hmm. what, you, just what have you been your experience and did you decide to go that route or not? Any of you? Um, uh, we did not, mostly because we weren't doing it before and the undertaking of setting it up and getting it right didn't seem worth it when we first thought it was going to be two or four weeks. Now knowing that it was going to be 10 weeks long, maybe we would have done it at the beginning, but it doesn't seem like a bandwagon worth jumping on now. But I might regret that later. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. just figuring and out. maybe, maybe. And just, just from my perspective and what I've heard from restaurants, um, I know there are a lot of restaurants using those services. Um, I always advise people you know, in every way that the more you can order direct from a restaurant, you know, or, you know, if they're doing their own delivery, or if you can do curbside pickup, the better, um, simply because all of these services, you know, some of them aren't char charging right now, um, but you might have to pay for it later. So, but they're taking a big chunk out of an already small margin for restaurants. So my message to diners is always, when you can avoid those third-party delivery services and order direct from the restaurant, you're helping the restaurant way more. Oh, yeah. yeah Meg from uh, Visit says hi to everyone. She mentioned that there are local delivery services like Forward uh, Courier. Someone else yeah. wondered, do you have to take the temperature of your chefs or workers Daily, we kind of we kind of talked about that, but if you have any special, well, also things. I'm not sure. Like uh, that's something that helps. But we've got a volunteer here who uh, already had COVID nineteen come and gone, and so that's why we allowed her to volunteer. She never had the fever the entire time. So they're like, instead, we're kind of all operating like we have it. Everything we do every day, like I'm not with a mask on right now because I'm in front of a computer screen with no one in front of me. But otherwise, we try and operate assuming that, like, at some point, we might have touched something. So constant sanitizing and a face mask. But taking somebody's temperature when that's an arbitrary marker of it doesn't really help us at all. And we're not a hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Someone asked like, with all of, all of you, um, uh, Truman, you can answer this one, too. I know you're driving. I don't want to have you unmute if you can't do it uh, comfortably and safely. But this direction, this question is coming towards your direction. Um, all of the changes, and all of you can kind of respond to this too. You've all done different things and pivoted in different ways. Of the things you've decided to do, what have been the most successful and do you foresee continuing any of them um, once the quarantine is over? I'm sorry, Corey. I'm sorry, Corey. Uh, Corey, I didn't hear the first. Can you hear me? I'm gonna try to unmute you. Uh oh, I think we lost him. Here we go. Any of the um, any of the changes or adjustments that you've made, um, the pivots, gotten created. What have been the most successful ones? And do you foresee yourself continuing any of this, any of the changes after quarantine is over? Absolutely. Um, the, so when I first started uh, Funky Fresh, I always thought that Funky Fresh would be great in grocery stores or food service 
But after like doing so much research on it and seeing the amount of capital it takes to become a frozen manufacturer, I just said, I'll just open a restaurant. That was literally my, how I got into the restaurant business. And that was like in 2015, 2016. Um, but now the frozen rolls are kind of making a resurgence and, and just, you know, me encouraging people to cook at home and like not wanting to cook our rolls and, you know, risk them being delivered and not had the same quality. I just, you know, give, you know, made it. Literally the first day I did it was like the day after everything closed. And I, I used like plastic Ziploc bags at first. And then literally day by day, we got better at printing out uh, cooking instructions and then um, getting better uh, storage containers and just keep, you know, growing from that. So. I'm definitely going to keep the um, the frozen food going even when things go back to the, well, not back to normal, but when the new normal officially happens, we're going to keep shipping our rolls. Yep. Anybody else made some adjustments that you think are going to stick around after? For, I don't know. If, yeah, for us, um, I think being very aggressive on social media uh, reaching the masses, boosting, again, if uh, given if we have some funds, um, but we actually uh, started being a little more aggressive on social media, reaching the masses, and I think we're going to keep going with that. We've seen an outcome. We've seen people show up on Saturday. Also doing a lot of the live feeds while you're at the restaurant really gives people that firsthand experience, um, mm -hmm. which I've seen some of the restaurants that are on here some of my colleagues here have done as well. I think that really pushes people to come and support you, see what's going on firsthand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, I think, yeah, I've been identifying like this whole time. Like I see more restaurants on Facebook, like posting like pages that have been dead for two years. You know, people are on Facebook and I can see, I can see what you're doing in specials every day. And I'm just like, this is amazing <laughs> from a consumer yes. standpoint and even from my standpoint like I, I try to keep up with what's going on and <laughs> and you guys have made that so much easier so good job marketing <laughs> yes. I, I think it's also like it it's going to be really hard as a place that's always been a restaurant that's now a soup kitchen to transition back and one of the things I really want to hold on to is the option for people to keep coming here and getting a free meal so I don't know how the hell it looks yet, but it might be like we have a menu item when we reopen to the public that is 10 bucks and you get to buy lunch for somebody who gets home and they kick it with everybody enjoy themselves. I don't know what that is, but I know that we're going to keep this kind of free food focus going in some way. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Lori, do you have any other questions? <laughs> so I, I don't have any other questions for you guys. Um, unless there are things that you want people to know. Um, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for doing what you're doing. So many of you, whether it's just simply surviving so that I can come and eat at your restaurant later, um, or community service that you're doing. Um, you know, I know how hard this is, especially on restaurants. And so I just want to encourage you and thank you for everything you do every day. Thank you, Lori, for what you do. You, Thanks, Lori. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Lori, and I wanted to personally thank and give kudos to Caitlin and the Tannen uh, crew for yes. doing what they do. You guys are doing great work. So thank yeah, you. Just of, it's just a bunch of bullshit. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, let that, with that said. <laughs> Restaurant people are good people, all of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, you, forgot, you forgot to bring everyone else a beer. Hey, look, I we opened up a whole tap just for me to sit <laughs> here and have a beer. I gotta be on these calls. <laughs> there you to, go. Cheers. I have to bring you all back for um, happy hour. And then, uh, are any of you uh, teaching folks how to cook stuff? Like, have you done went on, gone online and done any um, instruction? Actually, tomorrow Funky Fresh is doing the. A, a virtual cooking class with Teens Grow Greens, <laughs> and we're going to do uh, like how to make spring rolls on our Instagram live. So we were selling kits to people so they could join in. Like a kit, you can make up to 10 spring rolls, mm -hmm. and we got a bunch of different ingredients, and we're literally going to play a little 
a live version of Chopped on Instagram Live. Nice. With, uh, nice. The teens, teens Grow Greens. And uh, I'm going to probably may do a couple of ones like once every week. If people have been requesting how to make quinoa. <laughs> so that's been nice. out of everything in the world. Quinoa is like the number one request we've got. So I'm going to do some quinoa, do some other stuff as well. Really? So, so. Yeah. Because that, that's on your Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah. So all of you have really good information, and we'll um, when we send out this recording afterwards, we'll make sure everybody has links to the websites and all the Facebooks, okay? All right, thanks to all the participants. The chat was going crazy. I tried to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were in there talking to each other and uh, giving each other tips and tricks and talking about how awesome. the food is. Um, everybody loves you guys. Um, they miss seeing your faces, and I think this is good for people to see you. So thank yeah. you. Thanks again for doing this for us. Thanks, Caitlin. <sighs> thanks, Marcy. Julio. Thanks, Becca, Truman. And of course, Lori, thank you for all you're doing at All Milwaukee. Um, all the stories. Look at Marcy yeah. and Truman showing each other. <laughs> <laughs> Six feet apart, yeah. people. <laughs> but Lori, uh, thanks again <sighs> for everything that you've been doing to keep uh, people informed and connected and <clears throat> thanks again for inspiring this uh this webinar oh thank and thank you Corey joe thank you for yeah, thank, thank you for you. everything you do and for working so hard like yes your job you. is so much harder like yeah. too during you know what this, so. and it's, it's been a pivot for me too i'm going to show my screen so you guys can see what um what we got going on um <laughs> on thursday so we you know we've been doing these webinars every tuesday and thursday at two o'clock um and so next Thursday, or this Thursday that's coming on the 30th, we're doing, I wanted to do a, a, um, a webinar about everything that people are watching, right? Because at this point, we've been watching Netflix for, and <laughs> our Netflix, our Hulu, we've exhausted the shows that we are used to kind of looking at. And so everybody's on the Facebook, like, what is everyone watching? And, you know, what's everyone doing? And I thought it would be cool to kind of do a webinar about this and, we got TK Carter, who, if you look at his his um, awesome. his face and the roles that he's been in, he's one of these <laughs> actors that you know, but you don't necessarily know his name. So, like, I have it up on the screen here. He's been in Good Times, Family Matters, A Different World, Punky Ooh. Brewster, The Corner, uh, that the runaway hit from HBO, uh, How to Get Away with Murder. So his his movie with Ben Affleck was just released um, in March. So it was supposed to go in the theaters and they, um, because of this, ended up going straight to um, Netflix and other streaming. So he's going to talk to us about how this is going to affect, um, in his view, the movie and entertainment industry, um, what he foresees happening. Um, and we have some, uh, we got Chad from The Rep um, is going to be there. Andrea Thompson, a lot of people know her from her blog, A Real of One's Own. She's a movie writer. She does a lot of stuff. Um, and then Dante McFadden, Dr. Dante McFadden from UWM and Milwaukee Film Black Lens is going to be on there. So we're going to be talking all movies, all streaming, um, pivots, shifts, industry. So that'll be a fun conversation too. That's up on the website, on the FUEL website now. You guys can register for that. I haven't started pushing it yet. Yet, I'm sorry. Dante is from Marquette. He, he uh, went to school at uh, UWM, um, but he works at Marquette right now. Um, so anyway, that's up on the site. You guys can register for that right now. Thank you for all the participants and FUELers who've been hanging with us as mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out how to keep bringing interesting content and keep you guys connected during this time. And thanks again to all my panelists. Thank All you. right, I'll see you guys Thank on you. Thursday. Stay safe, yeah. everybody. Yes, good luck, everyone. <laughs>